I have a simple question for you. Have you yawned in today's class? Have your friends and classmates yawned along with you? If not, they may be psychopaths. For years, humans have speculated about the social significance of yawning. Scientists found that people with psychopathic traits are less likely to catch a yawn from the people around them because they tend to lack empathy and emotional connections with others. While some scientists focus on studying human yawning, others have turned their attention to species such as dogs. Canis lupus familiaris, the domestic dog, are a subspecies of the wolf and belong to the phylum Chordata, also known as craniata, which is characterized by a skull enclosing their brain. Brains vary in size and complexity among the animal kingdom, and scientists have set out to understand the brains of our furry friends. Scientists in Budapest found that dogs process voice and emotion in a similar way to humans. Inside a scanner, dogs listen to nearly 200 recordings of human and dog sounds. Like humans, dogs have brain systems devoted to interpreting vocal sounds. And in both species, the activity in these regions changed in similar ways depending on the emotional tone of a vocalization, regardless of whether the vocalization came from a dog or a person. In 2010, Sean O'Hara and Amy Reeve studied the relationship between yawning and emotional connection. This study hypothesized that dogs are more likely to yawn at familiar humans, such as owners, rather than unfamiliar humans and other dogs. Therefore, if emotional connectedness is related to contagious yawning, the owned dogs should yawn more contagiously compared to dogs in shelters, which lack a constant relationship. In the experiment conducted in the UK, 22 dogs in total were randomly selected. 12 dogs were owned and 7 were residing at a local dog rescue shelter. The remaining 3 dogs had to be omitted from the study due to poor temperament or housing relocation. To reduce dependence and limit fatigue, the trials of one week were conducted with a familiar person, and the second week the trials were conducted with an unfamiliar person. This also prevented the ability of an owner to practice with their pet had the trials been set up differently. Each week contained four trials for each dog, every trial consisting of a different type of test condition stimulus. Each stimulus was separately presented. Each stimulus was visual auditory, mouth movement, audio only, and conspecific yawning. The audio only was a sound only type media of a familiar or unfamiliar person yawning. The conspecific stimulus was a video of a cocker spaniel yawning. The combined visual auditory stimulus was performed by the familiar or unfamiliar person sitting on the floor in front of the dog, fake yawning. The stimulus mouth movements was conducted in a similar way by each familiar or unfamiliar subject just moving their mouth in the formation of a yawn. The hypothesis predicted that we should expect own dogs to yawn more contagiously than shelter dogs. Of the 152 trials conducted, 30 yawns were recorded. Across all trial conditions, owned dogs and shelter dogs responded with yawns at similar rates. The p-value, which represents the possibility of obtaining a result more extreme than their sample, was too high to accept their hypothesis, meaning that their results do not support a statistical significance in the difference between yawning in owned versus shelter dogs. This study has demonstrated a lack of correlation between dogs yawning and empathy, but this does not mean our pets don't love us just as much as we love them. Their results may redirect scientists' attention to the study of yawning in other animals such as primates, or to the possibility that the relationship between contagious yawning and empathy is merely a human construct. Some more profound and thorough understanding of human yawning is still an area awaiting more research that we hope to see in the future. Thank you.